Uh, right. So now that we wrap up the concept of pointer and we talk about how linked list is implemented in a high level idea, uh, today we'll focus on demo. Basically, we do a lot of C coding. Uh, would be great. I would really appreciate it. So this class would go really smoothly if you participate. Typing on uh, on your uh, uh, chat is okay. Uh, I will. I think there's a, uh, an option for for me to allow like, annotation as well. So I think if this worked out well, I might try to allow you to like put lines and put things on my screen on WebEx so that we can see like things that are going on, or like if I want to highlight certain things and ask like, okay, what line do I go now? Things like that, all right? So today will be demo day, but before we go there, we'll uh, do a quick recap where uh, we talk about, about what we talk about on uh, Monday quite a bit, right? So um, how do I, we talk about how do I represent 2D array, right? So the, the 2D array uh, is, Essentially, you can think of it as a matrix, like uh, 10 by 20 me uh, matrix, for example, right? You can allocate a 2D array inside your C program by just do in A10, 20, right? That's one way you do it. Uh, and as we said, you get a contiguous block of 10 by 20 uh, matrices. Uh, it would be flattened out. So instead of 2D matrices, it's basically one dimensional uh, 10 multiplied by 20 slot, which is basically 200 contiguous integer, right? And then we group by a slot of 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Oh my bad, that's 20, 10 groups of 20 array integer, right? You can do this, something like this too, right? In star A10, this means that I have an array of integer pointer, array of integer pointer. It means that things in my array is the first level of things in the array are pointers. And then you have to allocate things in your second uh, level to make sure you have the 10 by 20 metrics. You can also go full blown uh, double pointer here as well, right? In star star A, it means that I have this variable called A, which is a pointer to a pointer. Basically the first level points to a pointer, which you can allocate then you can allocate the second level, which now points to an integer, right? So key differences again is how you treat the memory addresses, right? Again, the first bullet point in A1020, you get contiguous 10 by 20 array. The second and third bullet point, you don't exactly guarantee contiguity, it's basically each of these pointer inside the array, when you allocate them, it's going to be a contiguous 20 integer, but all those array of 20 integer might not be next to each other, right? Uh, we also talk about how to implement data structure using pointers because at the end of the day, once you are taking the SOP class, right, you learn about different data structure that you might have to deal with in the future. Uh, and it's a good idea to know how to implement those things in C, and we use pointer for that. So we will kind of primarily focus on this concept of the linked list. If you haven't checked out the video of how what is a linked list, please do check out the video from Monday. Uh, it's actually pretty short and should be, I think, understandable in like 15 minutes. Uh, essentially, this apply when we have the pointer, you can apply to the next item. Basically, use pointer to point to the next item. So the general guideline is you can create a struct because a struct can contain multiple different things. So the first thing you want to store in struct is an actual data you want to store and then follow by a pointer that points to the next item. We'll show you how to do this today. Uh, and as I said, we play with this. And we talk about the linked list in C, right? So on uh, Monday, I talk about this uh, quite a bit. So I'm gonna go quickly here. So the way linked lists work is we have to go back to the concept of a list. So what is a list, right? So let me go with uh, find new option pen here. Uh, so list, right, is a collection of item, right? And it should be iterable, iterable, 
Because it's iterable, it means that you can go through your entire list. And the size can expand and shrink based on your insertion and deletion to your list, right? So you can insert new items to the list and you can get rid of something that's already on the list. So that's a, the difference, one of the difference between a list and an array, right? An array is a size is fixed. So let's say you have an array of size 10, you cannot go beyond 10 items unless, right? Unless you reallocate a new array of size, say 20, right? Which double the size, right? So that's the concept of the list. So what is a linked list, right? A linked list in C is basically a, a C way, I guess uh, the, the way in C to implement your list. Basically you have a struct which contain your data, right? And then you have a pointer that points to the same struct Right, but it's for a different think of it as like almost a different object in object oriented programming, but your again your struct is not an object, right? So another struct that contain data and a pointer which can point to the next item. And let's say that's it. This will point to now, which means that that's the end of my list. Right? If you want to delete something, for example, you want to delete this middle guy, you just need to make sure this point to this and you free this up, right? If you want to insert something new, then you create another struct with the data, right? And let's say you want to insert at the end this point to now, and then you get rid of this link, make sure this link point to here. And that's kind of like the, the, the convenience of link plus, right? Uh, but when you learn uh, uh, this particular data structure in the DSOP class, you know about the convenience and you also will know about the downside, right? So every single data structure has a trade-off. You need to kind of know what you want and how do you implement it, right? So in, in C, the basically, when you look at that struct, right? Basically you have the data part and this is a pointer, right? The pointer basically point to the, the struct, right? It's a struct pointer. Over here, this can be any data you want to store, right? And when you need to insert something, let's say you have this chain of linked lists, right? And you want to insert a new item here between the two, the, the first and the second items, right? Uh, let me label the, 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 uh, the name of each of these boxes, right? So let's say the first box is named A, this is named B, this is named C and this is named D, right? I, what I need to do is essentially, right? I have to use a different uh, color here uh, because I want to insert D between A and B, right? So it means that A now has to point to D. I get rid of this link, right? D will then point to B. The method you have to do is essentially overall just this, just this much. Right now, the step is first you make D points to B. The second step, make A point to D. And that's all. The last uh, step is to check if D is actually inserted it at the head or at the tail. So those are like the corner cases, right? Then the next thing is if you want to go through the list, you can kind of loop around, right? Because basically you, you can keep iterating over the pointer to the next item. We'll show you how to do this in a bit. Uh, deletion is also pretty simple. So let's say you have this linked list that look like this, right? Three items. Right? And you want to get the middle items, right? You cannot just write out free this item. What you need to do is first of all, make sure this item point to this item, right? And then the second step is free this. Right. And that's all. That's all. That's how you, what you need to do for deletion. Then you have to check if it's the first item, if it's the last item, is the link list empty. So those are the corner cases. Don't forget about the corner cases. Otherwise your program will have bugs. Right. So that's it about the lecture on Monday. And actually that's all for the material for the midterm. Right. So I want to go over the topics that we covered so far. 
before I, 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 I stop and pause here for your Q&A, right before we go into more like a, of the coding demo, right? So the topics we cover so far are Linux basic, uh, file structure in Linux and how you can go and browse file in your computer, right? The shell command and assignment one, shell script also and assignment one, right? Regular expression also part of assignment one. Git, right? We don't really have an, uh, I, I guess a long assignment about Git, but uh, it's really, really important tools that I would love for you all to try it out. Right? You force you should do, uh, uh, basically use Git for other classes, so don't worry about that. Uh, for now, make sure you at least have a grasp of like what is a Git and how do you push and pull, right? Uh, basic C, data types in C, pointers, memory allocation of malloc and free. And also the data structure in C. So there, there was a version of this class. If you watch the video playlist that are back then uh, about like two or three years ago, I will cover more data structure because back then uh, the students taking the class, some of them actually took the SLP. So it's quite a, a lot more benefit to teaching them how to write things like uh, a tree, right? Again, also back then, I the assignment is a little bit harder because some students also took algorithm class, which means that they know how to sort, right? So how to sort items in the array. So I asked them to do things like quick sort or merge sort, right? So those are topics that if you are interested, feel free to check out the older videos for that. Um, and again, I uh, again I have a previous year exam. Please do check it out on Canvas, right? So any questions before we take a brief pause for the Q&A? Uh, so we do a quick, quick, quick pause now. So any questions about the material before we go to do a demo and you're in class exercise? So today will be a demo day again. Uh, I'll, I'll code things and you watch me coding stuff. Any questions? All right, so there was a, a question about uh, what is star star A, right? This guy. Oops. Need a pen. Here. Right. What is this thing, star star A? So, I think the easiest way you can think about it is when you declare. So this is like variable declaration, right? I want to declare a new variable. Every time you put a star on top of something, that thing becomes a pointer. So the first star points to the second star. It means that now I have a pointer that points to a pointer, which essentially, it, let me go to a blank page here quickly, right? So let's say this is a variable A, right? This is star star A, right? What is, what can a pointer do with malloc? When I do, when I call malloc, right? So let's say a equals malloc. What's the type of a right now? The type of a right now is what? Is int pointer pointer, right? It int double star. A point to pointer to the integer a points to pointer to the integer. Because if the type of A is just int star, it means that A points to an integer. Now it's int star star, means that A points to pointer to an integer. So when I want to allocate the first level, is I can do something like this, size of, the type of each item of A, each item of A that it points to is int star, oops. It's going to be int star, right? And let's say I want to allocate 10 by 20 array. I can do a size of in store multiply by 10. What will I get here? I will have an array A, right? What's the type of each items in A? Can someone tell me what's the type of these guys in A? So, close enough. It's not an int, right? Because it's A star of a, it's, it's 
in star star is in star star so each item in here is actually in star each item in here is actually in star because a right a is in star star which means that it points to an int star what is an int star can someone tell me what is an int star in in like plain text english is pointer to an integer right it's a pointer to an integer so the array a is basically it's an array of pointer each item in this array of pointer points to an integer so everything in this boxes or everything in this boxes are pointer right pointer 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 right they are individual pointer but you have now collection of 10 different pointer seems useless right so what can i do with these guys so let's say i want to allocate a metric size 10 by 20 this is what i can do so let's say four right i equals zero i is less than uh, 10 right i plus plus and then i do this a right plus i star equals malloc size of and then i'll put this as a blank for now right multiply by 20. What did I just do here? What did I just do here? So I loop around. I go through the elements of A, right? I go through the elements of A, which is basically going through this array, this item, followed by 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 this item, go on and so forth, right? I the reference them to get the actual pointer in each of these boxes. So now I have a pointer is a pointer to what? Each item here is a pointer to what? It's a pointer to integer, right? It's a pointer to integer. So in here, I can say malloc size of int, right? So when I run this code, what essentially will happen is now each of these pointer becomes an array. Each of these pointer becomes an array. This this first guy now has his own array, right? That has 20 integer. So there's 20 integer. Right? This guy also has his uh his or her own uh array of integer, right? They all have 20 integer because you have the loop, each loop go through each of these pointer and do the malloc for size 20. So there's 20 integer as well. Right. And again, because I said these are done in like individual uh, allocation, right? So there's, it's not guaranteed that those box of 20 integer will be next to each other, but you can always go to each of these item because you have, well, A, the variable A allow you to go to each of these pointers. And then each of these pointer points to the array itself. So you can go to the integer by going to the second level. So if I do something like this, and then I dereference, and then I add five to this, right? And then I dereference again, this is kind of like the same as you go to A25, right? You go to the second row, I mean, the second, the third, the third pointer in my array, so because that's, it starts from zero, like a plus zero, a plus one, a plus two. So first you, you basically go to this guy, right? And then you go six item from them because again, start from zero. So it's plus zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, which is basically this particular number, right? So that's what the star star mean. And that's why I said it can be replaceable with just the two dimensional array, right? But you can use star star for many other purposes. Basically the key point here is that it's a pointer to a pointer. It's a pointer to a pointer. It points to 
the array pointer, which can then point to an array. Uh, any questions that uh, from here, from this particular explanation, any follow-up questions? Okay, so now that we forgot to record the video about metrics uh, add and vector add, uh, but you can look at the sample code I'm going to put on the uh, on the server, right? Um, let's do a linked list implementation. As I said, I want a node that has the item and the pointer, right? So I can say, hey, in data, right? And then struct my star next. Right. Basically, what it does is I create a struct that consists of two things, one integer and a pointer that points to the next item. So we're done. I type cast them so that now struct my node is equivalent to typing node. So node is now a data type. Node is the data type now. So the next line can say node star first. This is just a pointer that I can point to the first item in my linked list, right? So that I point the first item in my linked list. In this example, I want to do a few things. First of all, I want to be able to go through my list and print them. So this is the easiest thing I can do, right? So I'll do it first. If first equals no return, I do nothing because my list is empty. Else, right? Or first, uh, So I have a temp pointer that points to the current item for current equal first, current not equals to now, current equals to current next. And then I can just print Current data. So now you might have realized, right, that I don't even have to check if the list is empty or not because current will point to the first, and then the first thing I check is if that's empty. So I can delete these two lines. And there you go. I can now go through the list, right? Every time I go through the loop, I go to the next item and whenever I visit any node, any node, for example, I'm at the first node, I would print out the nodes data, right? The nodes data, which is this guy. So we just finished the printing part, right? If I want to get the size of my list, this is what I can do. Same logic, but this exact same thing. Instead of printing, I say count data. Right. So every time I iterate through the loop, I count up and I return count. So now I can get the size of my linked list. So let's do a longer break for your lunch. Uh, right now, so let me copy the code over. For both the uh, copy or C, I guess. To uh, sample code, right? And I have, I believe we have uh, 2022 T1, right? So uh, uh, there's only lecture three and four. So let me create a directory uh, for lecture six. And then CP star dot C sample code. So that's on two T1 lecture six. All right, so all the code are there, including this linked list, right? That, that I haven't finished. If you want to take a look at it while you're eating lunch, feel free to, uh, so that you can come back and ask questions. That's totally fine. Uh, let me do auto CH. Uh, I think you can read it. Uh, uh, if you cannot access a file, let me know, because I believe you can actually access a file. 
that's it for the 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 first half of the class. Uh, let's do a forty minutes break for lunch so that you can actually look at sample code, sample video. Um, uh, not sample video, like the 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 uh the code I put there. And in case you have any questions, and we'll come back and finish out the linked list implementation, and then we go through our uh, last in class exercise before we take a uh, uh, the midterm. All right. So I guess I'll see you in 40 minutes. In the meantime, I'll be around here. So basically, if you have questions, either ping me on Discord or just put it on a chat. I periodically will come and look at the chat. All right. So we'll be back at, let's do 12.25. Okay. All right. So great. So let me repeat that, uh, what I just apply again just in case it's, I can go to the recording and you can review them later right uh, the first question is why can I access the data beyond the range of where I allocate things is first because the way permission checking in Linux and Mac OS and your CPU like x86 uh, CPU is that they are tracked in the page granularity which is four kilobytes so if you stay within that four kilobyte range or uh, four kilobyte windows you 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 will not have this illegal access permission checking thing happening. So you will not get sick fault. But once you walk into someone else's data, then they always say, hey, that's someone else's data, sick fault, all right? Uh, the second question is, when you look at the two dimensional array in the format of double pointer, uh, what you actually get is the first level you get an array of pointer. In, in the array of pointer, what essentially is in there is the address, right? So basically, uh, let me use laser pointer here. So basically you get the address that's stored in here. The address are information, right? It's just some number. And the size of that address is going to be eight bytes long, which will point to another location in the memory. And that location can now hold a bunch of number, which is another array. So it's like the first array is an array of pointer and each pointer can point to the second array which is now actually array of numbers. So hopefully that's more clear with the, the, the questions that you got. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yes, so if you look at star A10, right? So for example, if you look at something like uh, point of option 10, right? If you look at star A10, it basically means that you have an array of pointer, which is now initialized to 10 slots. Each slots there are pointer where you can then allocate the space for them later. So now you have a static size 10 array of pointer where each item in there, you can then allocate another separate array of integer for them. So is that more clear? Uh, I think that's a great question. So the question is, will that be on the midterm exam? Hmm. Good question, I'm not sure. I haven't finished the midterm yet to be honest. Uh, it can, I guess you're giving me ideas on what to ask. Um, but I mean, hopefully the answer is clear. So it's like close to the exam date. So you might have remembered this uh, easier than things that you asked like five weeks ago when we talk about regular expression, right? So uh, I guess that's a benefit in that. All right. Okay. So I tried doing size off for my malloc array. In terms of, I can use size off for malloc array. Oh yes. Great question again. Right. When you do size off, when you do size off, right? Size. Size off only give you the data size. Size off. You they give the size of that. Data type, right? Basically, it will give you the, the, the size of that data type, one single item. 
the reason why that that's a great question is when you use dynamic array you need to keep track of the size because otherwise you don't know where is the end of my allocation call so usually there'll be some some size pair uh with with that particular uh thing that you try to allocate for in in a much more practical sense when you go to c plus plus you see that many of the uh object that implement complex data that has malloc in them they typically would have size as one of the uh internal variable that that were track so hopefully that answers your question basically yeah uh, you need to keep track of the size yes i know c c is not as convenient but it's a it's a really really good uh, uh gateway into a bunch of like computer system stuff which sometimes we program in c plus plus for convenience because they are actually really fast Somehow we need to program in C because it's actually much closer to the hardware and you can control a lot more things. So the beauty of C is you can, you, you got the control, right? It's like you now can control every component. Well, not, not to that sense, but you can control so many more things compared to like Python, even C++. Because think about it this way. Someone has to be that guy who writes Microsoft. Windows, so that it operates your machine, right? Many of the codes are done in C. And then like many of those are like low level languages like C, right? So so that's why we learned this, this uh, I guess, knowledge because you can write program to control the machine. I'm not sure, is this the same question that someone asked already? They didn't quite catch it, but a, uh, so, uh, blah, blah, blah. yes. Yes. All right, any other questions? Well, actually, yes or no? Uh, drop that star in front of A, sorry, on your chat. So, so the question is, the, uh, sorry, I, I thought it's a private chat. So let me reiterate the question. The question is this, is uh, star A 10, uh, this guy, this guy, is this equal to, and my pen is going crazy. Okay, sorry, I put it wrong way. Is this equal to malloc? size of in star multiplied by 10 the answer is yes but the, the 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 reason i said yes and no is because on the chat uh the student put star a equals malloc it's actually a equals malloc so you can drop the star uh any other questions this is great so i think actually i'm glad that, that we do a longer break so we can kind of process a bunch of things So I guess keep them coming. In the meantime, let me switch over to uh, not this Zoom class and please get lunch kind of thing. But and thank you for letting me know my Dropbox is almost full. Uh, with those. All right. So let's look at linklist.c, right? Um, we have print done. We have get size as also done. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is now let's first look at the, the main code for a little bit, right? Uh, I have insert add. Insert add is a function that inserts a new node at the location index. So for example, if I want to insert at one, I want to insert that node at the second item. Basically, everything starts from zero. So you have the first item you insert at zero five, you have number five followed by number 10. And then now that, so this is what the link list will look like. So it originally just number five, right? So let me get through this. And then this will be basically five and 10, right? And this, but I insert 20 at position one. So it will be five, 20 and 10. 
And then delete add means that I want to delete that position. So in this case, your linked list becomes just five and 10 because you get rid of position uh, one. Uh, over here, it should be basically uh, you delete the first item, so it should be 10, right? And this should do nothing because I want to delete something that doesn't exist. And then over here, you now should get an empty list, right? Okay, so here is how I would do insert add and delete, right? So let's first do the insert add. It's practice, uh, actually really simple. Here are the steps. Step one, go to the location you want to insert, right? Step two, uh, allocate the new node. Step three, insert the node. All right, so let's do one by one. Okay, so first you need to go to the location that you want to insert. How do I do this? I can do something like this. Uh, node pointer temp, right? Or temp equal first. Temp, uh, my bad. Temp also counter. And then count is still less than index. Index is the index you want to insert at. And then uh, temp equals temp next. So basically, this will force you to go, and then you don't do anything in the loop. You finish the loop right away. The only thing you do here is you go from each node, the first node, second node, third node, for, uh, uh, go so on and so forth. And actually, you need to actually increment count bad. Another bug in my code. So you keep going until count equals index. For example, if index is zero, it, it initialize temp equals first and done. We know that you want to insert at the beginning. If index is one, then you go to the, the first node, right? Temp will point to the, basically temp will now point to the second node. Question? Uh, we at the right location, or uh, we actually one step further ahead of where we want. All right, so let me leave you with that question and I'll give you two minutes to think about this. So there's a question in the chat that asks like, what does temp equal temp next mean? Uh, here's, let me break it down, right? Uh, if you look at my struct, right, what is next? So, so first of all, right, to access, to access this next, right, one thing I can do is that let's say I have a, I have, let's say I have node star temp, right? Basically, this means that I create a pointer to my node, right? I can get to my data with the commands. It's a pointer, right? So first thing I need to do is to, the reference them and then say dot data. So is this part clear? At least for, for now, is this part clear? I can go to my data with this particular uh, uh, command. I dereference temp because temp is a pointer. I need to get a struct. So I dereference and then do dot data. Is this part clear? But I can also do temp arrow sign data. It's the same thing. Basically, it's the equivalent operation. It's the same operation. You dereference, then go to data. It's just a fancy uh, uh, feature that CGC get like give it to you, right? So if I want to access the pointer next in my struct, right? I can do again, star temp dot next, right? Now I'll get my pointer, which means that I can also do temp arrow sign next. 
So hopefully that answered the question. Basically, that gives me the address because next is the address of the next node. I'm at the first node. So this is basically what happened when I do, I need to temp equals, right? Equals temp next. This means that originally, say, temp is pointing, right? Because it's a pointer and it, it points somewhere, pointing at node B in here. So let's say, so let's say that that's my link list. And right now temp points at node, node B, then temp next point to what what node does temp next point to right now temp is at node point at node b so what does point temp next point to which node a b c or d C, yes, this point to C, right? So this means that if I do temp equal temp next, I basically move right to the next node. So is that clear? Awesome. So that's it. Yeah. So that's what I do here. I insert, right? And I keep doing temp equal temps next. My next question is, are we actually one step ahead? Example, right? Say we have this link list, A, B, C, and then D, right? And And we want to insert E between, oh, uh, I guess at index one. So that we have A, point to E, point to B, point to C, point to D, right? So let me organize it. If we run the code above, where the index is one, where is temp? So let me answer this question. Where is temp? If I run the code above, where is temp? Does it point to A? Does it point to E? On oh, uh, my bad. Does it point to A or B? So it goes into the loop. Index is one, count is zero. Index is one, count is zero. It moves to the next node, right? So it moved to B. Index is one, count is one, I stop. So right now, temp points to B. If I'm at B, if temp is at B, can I insert B for B? Or do I need to actually be at A? All right, can someone answer me that question? Do I need to be at A or B to, to actually be able to sneak in E between A and B? I need to be at A, right? So how can I fix this? How can I stop one step before the location I want to insert?
not not the referencing, right? Ideally, you want to be able to go back from B. I want to be able to go back to A, right? The other hack, yes, index minus one. You want to stop just one step ahead. Now, if I do index minus one, so let me copy the code here, right? Uh, and put the comment here. And let me clarify this. Let me use the commented uh, code so that we have, like, once I save the file, you see all this discussion. So now we are at the right location, except for one corner case. What's that? What would be the one corner case that, that we are not at where we want to be? If we want to fill in the first item if index is zero, right? So if index is zero, if index is zero, count is definitely less full. What happened? What if index is zero? Will count be, be ever less than index? Index is always going to be non uh, negative number, right? So we keep looping this forever. So you run into a uh, sick fault tail, right? So here's what I can do, right? Step zero. Deal with the case we insert at index zero by doing this. If index equal equals zero, what do we do? No temp, right? Temp equals malloc. I want to basically create a new a new node, right? And then say, hey, temp data. I want to basically store data as an input. What my input is called data. Over here, my input is called data. I want to insert that number at this index. Now, temp next should be what? It should point to the current first item, right? It should point to the current first item, which is first. And then first equals temp. So basically now we ensure that the new node point to the beginning right, of my list. And then update the beginning of my List to this new inserted node. All right, so we're done. Now, assuming index is never going to be zero, at 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 best, index will be one. So we will now be at the correct location. Now, the next step is oh, I forgot. And now you just return. Now the next step is allocating this uh, temp, right? Temp. So it's the same thing we did earlier. Temp equals malloc size of node, right? And then I've got semicolon and then temp data equals data and temp next equals what? Oops, my bad. We need temp too. Temp2 is the new one we insert. Temp is the node that we want to make sure points to temp2. Temp next is should be right temp here. Why do I do this? So let me put in a comment, right? Temp two is the new node we want to insert. And we just allocate and set the data, right? Over here, this is fun fun part right now. So let's assume the, the problem with like A, B, C, D, right? Assume we have A points to B. 
points to C points to D. Example, a bowl, right? We ten is at A, right? Ten two is the new number E. We need to make sure A next points to E. This is why I do temp to next. Well, that's the next line actually. We basically set E next to A next because that's that's the node we want, right? We want at the end. So we want to insert E after A right between A and B. Now the new node is E. The first thing we need to do, A has the link to B, so we want to make sure E points to B. The links to B is A next, so we just set E next to A next. Then we update A next so that A points to E. Any questions? So we're done, actually. We don't have to do step three. Step three is like this thing combined. Any question here? So we handle when index is zero, we insert at the, at the, uh, at the front, right? Uh, now let's do deletion. What if we want to delete at this index, right? So let's stick with this example of A, right? B, e, C, and D. Assume we want to delete. index one but what do we do i guess the first thing again we iterate right where do we want our loop to stop a or b all right let me ask you this first question do you want the loop to stop right at A or right at B? When I want to delete B. If I want to delete B out of this linked list, do I need to stop at A or B? The answer is A, right? I want to stop at A because I need to set A to C. A because I need to set A to C to point to C. All right. So again, the same condition is shift uh, apply. So first, if, right, if my list is empty, don't do anything because there's nothing to delete, right? Or if index equals zero, we want to delete the first item. What we actually have to do is, uh, temp equal first, right? That's the node we want to free. And then we want to make your first point to temp next, which is the second item. And then we free temp. So that's the first, that, that, that's the only thing we have to do. We want to get rid of the first item. Else, else we loop. Else we loop. 
we do this. Right, we go, go, keep going until we are right before where we want to delete, right? Now we should be right before where we want to delete. So we, what we do now, we want to delete the tab next, right? Basically, A, two, three, B, and temp points to A. So we first make sure that something point to B, then we make sure a next right points to b next then three b right so that's all we do node star temp2 equals uh so right now we are at a right so this temp next we want to make sure it's point to c and then temp next equals to what equals to what? You skip one item, basically. Now A points to A next next, which is B, C, right? Then you free temp two. The reason why we need temp two, it's just that because when we do temp next equal temp next next, no one point to B anymore. So we have to have some spare variable that points to B. All right. Now, one more edge case, one more edge case. What if temp next is now will we ever run into this case actually we are right before the item we want to delete but that item is now it doesn't exist so if temp next equals now it means that we try to delete something that way beyond the size of my link list we can return all right, so we're done. I think I think we're done. One more thing. Right now, if we want to insert at and our list is empty. Or when. So if first equals no, right? Because otherwise we, we can't even iterate. In this case, we want to just insert. at the first item. You want to allocate the data, insert the new node as a fresh new oh. node in the list. And now first we'll point to this guy. So we can compile, I think, and line 152, that should return some, oh. Yeah, why well, mean? Okay. All right, then let's test it. And we have one sec fault, right? One sec fault at the end, which probably has something to do with deletion. So let's go into what's going on, right? Because I don't write perfect code as well. Uh, that's G, uh, link list dot C. Right? And then I G D B D link, uh, uh, edit out. And we can just run and check what uh, the trace of function call, so delete at when index is 1000. Delete at when index is 1000. This is when we want to delete, but the index is way after the size of my list. Right? And this is actually an easy fix. So here's what I can do.
So if count is less than index minus one, right? I want to delete this. But if the index is really, really far away, right? Or temp next equals now, so that we, we actually stop going, right? Or temp equals now. Like just no, no more thing to delete, right? Which is the same case as here, as here. It means that the index we want to delete is way beyond the size of my list. So that's one thing. The second thing that can happen is if insert at has an index that's really high, I haven't really set the condition for that, but if that happened, right, or temp next equals now, basically the next, the, we are at the last item, is stop and we can just let them insert at the end of the list. So now we are at 12. Now I need to debug. I'm actually not sure what's going on. Oh, then index one, data 10. That's the first thing, right? That line 136 in the main function, which is line 85. So that's the first thing we do. We insert at, uh, one here. Oh, it should be N. We should keep going until if count is still less than this and temp neck is not now, we will keep going. Condition wrong here as well. If this the left side is true and we can keep going. This is in here because otherwise it would not attempt next, which is not what I intended to do. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. It's the same thing. Sorry, guys. Now we are good. So again, the segmentation file we had in the beginning is in the case where index is way beyond the size of my linked list. So we try to delete something that doesn't exist. And our loop that do temp equal temp next will keep going because we never have a condition to check that, hey, if that's the end of my linked list, stop going. So I keep going, 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 going until it try to dereference now. When you dereference now, you get sec fault. And the other thing I added, because there's a bug in the insertion logic, there's also the same bug in the, oh my God, there was a bug we found in the deletion logic. Definitely the insertion logic has the same problem. So again, we stopped when temp next equals no. All right. Uh, so let me copy this linked list.c to sample code so we can take a, a long look at what's going on with all my comments, right? Uh, lecture six here, it should be up now. Uh, feel free to check out the code in here, right? And let's do a, the last break for the session. Uh, we will be back. So please give me about 15 minutes. I think my daughter is like crying a lot because uh, we are feeding her right now. I um, want to make sure everything is, is fine in, in order. Uh, but I'll be back around like 120, 125. And then we will do the in-class exercise. So one more thing that uh, we have is the uh, in class five, which we ask you to do the transpose of the metric. Uh, we will switch to Discord afterward. So basically, you can start in class five right now. I just we I will be back around one twenty five. Just make sure my daughter is okay. Um, but again, the code is now in is now in sample code two thousand twenty two T one. All right. So I'll, I'll exit from my WSL. Uh, I'll, I'll keep the screen open and we will resume.
around 10 20 10 25 on discord you can start now actually it just i need the quick break to check that everything in my house is still okay and my daughter is doing okay <laughs> i'll be right back guys uh thank you so much uh and we'll do a break i'll be right back okay <laughs> 